You guys, today we're going to be talking about how you can continue your journey of being a great self-taught developer. A little while back I did a video giving you the tips on how to become one, but becoming a great self-taught developer and continuing past that point and getting better and and maturing and, and handling all the aspects of software engineering from the beginning of your career to the middle to the end is two completely different things. So today what we're going to be talking about is how to not only maintain being a great soft self-taught developer but how to sort of take it to the next iteration the next level all right so um what we're going to talk about is how to go from being good to great to better that's sort of the mentality i try to take with when i'm learning something new and as my career is I want to get good then I want to get great and then I want to get better and if you take that idea and just understand that a lot of times it's rehashing the similar plan while making tweaks to it you can find that you're gonna get a lot of success in many places right so um, whether you're interested in buying a home and understand the buying process in depth maybe that first time you put the effort in to get good to understanding those sorts of technical things and then by the time you get your second home, you're like, you're great at it. And then you continue to get better. And that's why that better part is so important. A lot of people think that once they get great at something, they're there, they're done. No, you can always get better in no matter whatever it is you're trying to do. So keep that in mind. So the first thing, uh, you know, tip number one to continuing to be a great self-taught developer, sort of remember where you came from. Remember what what got you to where you were a lot of times people they go to those meetups they you know they're they're handling their linkedin properly they have a proper github they're they're studying outside work they get that first job they're like oh baby we're ready to do nothing we're gonna do nothing but play uh you know what are the kids playing nowadays uh fortnite apex legends something like that league of legends non-stop 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 and they don't put any more time into their personal development don't go to meetups don't go to conferences i'm not saying that you can't take your foot off the brake what i'm saying is you still have to be driving the car you know you know what i mean like you still have to be putting effort into growing and those things that made you successful that got you to be a good self-taught developer if you continue doing them they will make you a great self-taught developer and a great developer period and you need to continue to do that so just remember the things that made you successful and continue to practice them and vice versa if there are some things that didn't work for you remember that as well because we're you know we want to learn from our mistakes so that that's tip number one now um tip number two uh is um being comfortable at work what i mean by that is Chances are you're you're gonna be uh, working in a specialty. You know, some some of you will have um, sort of uh, those the the higher paying jobs that you're in will typically be specialized. And the reason for it is they want someone very proficient in the front end, very proficient in the back end, very de proficient in um, deployments and DevOps, and um, very proficient in testing and UI UX, whatever it is. As you move up into larger companies what will happen is you're gonna specialize in one way or the other, more often than not. Um, so how you go and expand out is be willing to take on tasks that aren't your own at work. You don't know anything about deployments? Dope. Go handle some deployment stuff. You don't know anything about front end? Go write some HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and you know, um, you know, be willing to, you know, be a little uh, picked at because oftentimes you're going to have professionals that are going to be reviewing it and you're not at a professional level yet but you're putting yourself out there and that's okay it's okay to understand that you're going to be putting out a subpar product in this in the interim while you're handling the let's get better so be willing to tackle those tasks and you're saying well dylan is people gonna let me do that i've never had an issue um you know oftentimes when you're getting paid um you know, fifty, sixty dollars an hour, whatever your salary to rate, hourly rate is, and you want to do more work than less. No one ever says, "Oh, hold up, buddy. You know, <laughs> hold up. We want you to. We want to get as little value out of our most expensive resource, uh, minus like directors and things like that, on the payroll, please. So can you just slow it down, get a little less done? That's not really how the world works. So keep that in mind. Now, 
Another thing, uh, tip number three, and this may come off a little bit savage, and that's okay. I think as an employee, as an employee in the world, and just in the world in general, you need to be a savage. You need to look out for yourself above anyone else, because at the end of the day, to a business, to to 99.999 repeating uh, <laughs> percent of businesses look at you, and if they gotta cut you, they gotta cut you. It, it's the name of the game. I've never uh, really seen it any other way. So. Be willing to leave your job. And why, you say? I'm not telling you to go and jump jobs for no reason. I'm telling you to go and jump jobs because that's going to force you to be uncomfortable. That's going to force you to learn some new things. Because no matter where you go, the job is going to have new technologies, new frameworks, new languages. There's going to be something new. New tools you might be using. Maybe you were using Jira, now you're going to be using Azure DevOps. Maybe before you were doing Mocha and Chai testing, now you're going to be using uh, Jest or Jasmine. You're going to be forcibly exposed to not only working with new technologies, but new people who are going to have new ideas, who are going to teach you new things. So when you've reached that point a year in, a year and a half in, two years in, sometimes even six months in, um, when you've reached that point, be willing to jump ship. Not and, you know, go get yourself a little bit more money in the process, but and take care of yourself that way, because I'm sure you got family. I'm sure you got bills. I'm sure you got a mortgage, whatever. So make sure you handle that. But be willing to leave your job. And this will pay off for you after about the fourth or fifth time you do it. You're probably not going to learn too much more, like uh, not in that domain. Right. Um, the software industry changes fast, especially in web dev. But uh, if you jump a job once a year, uh, you know, once every two about three, four, five times, probably there's not gonna be too much new stuff that you're gonna be picking up and you've probably touched a little bit of everything, which is great. And now you've been exposed to a lot more, you've learned a lot more, and you've matured a lot more. So that's tip number three. Tip number four, sort of similar to being uncomfortable at work, but learn other domains. I've said this again and again, and this is outside of work, necessarily, at work, outside of work, but what makes a great specialist is a good generalist. So. Um, one thing that makes me good as a front end engineer is I have an understanding of how the back end works. I've worked in the back end, I've done projects in the back end, I've been employed uh, working in uh, full, as a full stack engineer. I've done SQL, I've done document based databases. I understand caching. I understand core concepts of of you know back of back of the uh, back end technologies such as REST and. I, I understand these topics and because of that, I'm able to easily communicate with my backend engineers, my full stack engineers, be able to have this and give ideas and suggestions. And when there's a bad idea, being able to speak to it and just not taking their word for it. So learn other domains because that will increase your value long term as well. Because you're just when you can provide more value, you get more value uh, and you're more employable. Right. So if anything bad happens in your life, you get laid off, whatever the chance may be. Um, you know, you got to move across country. You have those options and you have those skills available to you. So um, that's tip number four. Uh, final tip, tip number five, something that I've been doing since the start of my career is develop a yearly plan. We talked about this in the other video about going and creating a a plan of how to get that first job, how to become a good self-taught developer, all that sort of stuff. Now we're talking every year having a plan of action about what it is you want to accomplish so that you can go and make sure that you are a better developer than you are the previous year. And I've released these videos in my case on the channel talking about the book I want to write, the course I want to build, I want to go to conferences this year, and I've been working on all three of those. I probably had one about getting in shape, but you know, boom, no, <laughs> um, but Create a yearly plan and update them and try to accomplish them. And at the end of the year, if you accomplished three out of four, take the W. And you know, that L, it's not it's not a loss, it's more of a lesson. All right. So keep that in mind and be willing to reevaluate. Okay, why didn't I get this? How how did I not die? Not am I not working as hard as I was before? Why is that? Can I afford not to work as hard? Why is that? That's a fair question too. I can honestly say that I've lost a little bit of steam and sort of my my step as a as an engineer because things are going better. I have investments. I have, you know, uh, a good job. I have I have all these things that are working out for me that I, I'm not as motivated. I'm OK saying that, but you have to have some motivation. You have to have something or at least understand that you're in a good spot. So if you can if you can imagine worst case scenario, you get fired tomorrow and you're in an OK spot. 
cool. Take it. Take a deep breath. You got money in the bank. You got your your family's gonna be okay. You're gonna, you're confident that you can get a job in one month. If that worst case scenario is is acceptable, it's okay to take your foot off the pedal. But until your life is not sort of um, future proof, and in you know nothing can ever be future proof, but in a under in a in a in a okay manner i'm looking for a, be- a better adjective but it's future proof in a uh a, a manner that makes sense you need to keep working and that yearly plan you need to you need to really understand why you missed that one out of four because if you're not there yet you're gonna have issues so keep working at that keep having those yearly plans and make sure they change every year because the the junior developer yearly plan should be different than the developer two years experience and three or four and senior developer and then the super senior it needs to change yearly because what's important to you from a junior developer is just learning the tools you look at to mid-level developer to learning more high high uh, high topic items and and continuing now so keep that in mind so those are my five tips to make sure that you are not only a good self-taught developer self-taught engineer but a great one and then you use them and sort of refactor repeat to become an even better self-taught developer but as always guys thank you so much for watching the video don't forget to comment like subscribe share hit that notification bell that's the thing and if you're interested in any of my courses or books i recommend there's links in the description below see you guys next time bye hey guys thanks for watching the video don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers i i actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.